Sunday, the day we have been waiting for all through Lent, and I'm so glad that you are with us this morning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift our hearts to you. As the dawn breaks, may we carry the unity we share into every moment, knowing that we are one with the risen Christ. Lord, we lift our eyes to you. As the sun rises, may this moment stay with us, reminding us to look for the beautiful colors of promise in your world. Lord, we lift our prayers to you. As the dew air falls, may we breathe this morning in and know that like the earth, you sustain us, keep us, and work within us always. And so we lift our voices to you. We celebrate this greatest day in history when Jesus rose from death, defeated brokenness and sin, and gave the world the love and hope of the resurrection. May we ever live to praise you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Glory be to you, Lord Christ, whom death could not defeat. Praise to the Savior of heaven and earth. Honor and glory are yours now and forever. Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. The first reading is from the 10th chapter of Acts. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the 15th chapter of Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood before them. 
The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? Then the women remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. Peter saw the linen clothes by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. My friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah! Friends, today is the day of things that are hard to believe made true. Have you ever seen something just so unbelievable and then you tried to tell people about it and you just knew even as you were telling the story that people wouldn't believe you? When I was in college, I went to Clemson University, by the way. Go Tigers. Um, I was driving to class from my off-campus house. And the traffic through town, Clemson is a very small town normally, was very backed up. And no, it wasn't a game day. When I finally got to the head of what was causing the traffic jam, there was, crossing the street, a tortoise that was easily the size of a very large Ouch. slowly crossing the street and I was going to be late to class late to a class with a professor who did not approve of lateness and so I finally got near my classroom building I parked my car I ran in breathless and I walked in and I said Dr. Katsianis you don't understand there was a tortoise in the road he didn't believe me. Fortunately, I had a really good friend who had had the same situation happen to her. She was also stuck in the traffic. She came into class two minutes after me and said, no one is gonna believe this, but there was a tortoise in the road. It was still completely unbelievable. And so it is with the resurrection. I mean, Jesus was dead completely and utterly dead and then alive. Not only was Jesus dead, but everything that was him died as well. The love he had for his friends and for his mother, all his brightest memories, all his fears, all of that died too. His preaching, his manner of living, his ideas about the reign of God, even his signs and healings and miracles, we're all dead with him. That is what death does if we are human. It is what death did to his humanity. It strips us of everything. We do not survive death. We are annihilated by it. And that is the way it is. Unless God does something to dispute the power of death. And God did. God raised Jesus. Jesus lives resurrected. And this is not something we can understand. Only believe that Jesus, our Lord, was raised from the dead. Because even those who saw the resurrected Jesus struggled to believe at first. Amazing things happen regularly that are hard to believe. So you can only imagine how the women and the disciples felt as they saw the empty tomb, 
and then later saw the resurrected Jesus. The resurrection is this amazing, unbelievable, yet believable event that changed the world. And it is where, as Christians, we focus our energy on that tomb, on that morning, on what happened there. It's simply too amazing to fully understand because resurrection does not align with anything else we know about physical human life on earth. No one has ever seen it happen, and so it can be impossible to understand. And even at times, we struggle to believe it. In my times of uncertainty and doubt about all this resurrection stuff, it helps me to remember that no one saw it happen on Easter morning either. The resurrection is the one and only event in Jesus's life that was entirely between him and God. There were no witnesses whatsoever. No one on earth can say what happened inside that tomb because no one else was there. They all arrived after the fact. And most of them saw nothing at all because they were still in bed that morning. But as it turned out, that did not matter because the empty tomb was not the point. Because clearly Jesus was not there. He could have stayed put, I guess. Sitting there all nice and new and healthy between the piles of clothes so that everyone could come in and see him. But that's not what he did. Jesus had outgrown his tomb, which is too small for the focus of the resurrection. The risen one had people to see and things to do. The living one's business was among the living to whom he appeared not just once, but many times. And every time he came to his friends, they became stronger, wiser, kinder, more daring. Every time he came to them, they became more like him. And this can be really difficult to understand at times, even believe, because Jesus was dead, completely dead, beaten, crucified, dead, and then resurrected, not just resuscitated, but made new, whole, complete. However, even in my struggles to understand, and even though I believe, I know the resurrection to be true. Or rather, the resurrection goes beyond the truth. Resurrection is, in the words of Stephen Colbert, truthiness. You see, truth means conforming with reality or fact. Whereas truthiness means a truth that someone knows intuitively from the gut without regard to evidence, logic, intellectual examination, or facts. And the truthiness of the resurrection is that it goes beyond that which holds true regardless of what is supported by fact. And even though Stephen Colbert meant his word to be a jab at certain people he did not agree with, I think the word truthiness can help us to understand the resurrection. Our gospel accounts are, uh, our gospel accounts of the narrative of the resurrection, they are narratives of faith, not proof. We know the resurrection occurred, but when it defies logic and human understanding, we know that the resurrection is true beyond what facts may or may not present themselves about that holy event. And the real truth of the resurrection is that we are a people who know that the resurrection of Jesus is more than just the happy ending of the story. Because it's just the beginning of the story. The story in which we are all included in the love and grace and work of the kingdom of God in the midst of the here and now. 
And so what do we do with this good news? Well, like Mary Magdalene and Joanna, Mary the mother of James and the other women, we don't stay in the empty tomb. We don't keep the resurrection of Christ to ourselves. We share the good news of the resurrection with any and with all. We tell the world about this event that changed the world. We remember our baptisms that brought us into the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. We gather weekly or as often as we can to retell our story and share in Holy Communion. And we continue to live in the hope and the promise of the day of the final resurrection, where we and all of creation will be reconciled in God's love and grace. The resurrection is not about what happened at that moment at the empty tomb. What happened in the tomb was entirely between Jesus and God. For the rest of us, Easter began the moment the women recognized that Jesus was not in the tomb, and they remembered Jesus' words and they told the disciples. That is where the miracle happened and goes on happening. Not in the empty tomb, but in their proclamation of the resurrection. My friends, we live by narratives of faith. We live in and beyond the truthiness of the promise of the resurrection. We live in the promise of God's redemptive work in our world and in our lives here and now. And so we can proclaim, hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. We are gathered by God into one church through Christ. Together with sisters and brothers throughout the world, we confess our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you, O God, for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Praise to you, O God, for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Praise to you, O God, for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
Praise to you, O God, for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope, those who are afraid or confused, those who are sick or suffering, those who are dying, and those who grieve. Assure them of your promises. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Praise to you, O God, for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home, at work, and in our community. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Praise to you, O God, for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all who have gone before us in proclaiming. Your mercy endures forever. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Attend to the needs of the whole world with your saving grace and lead us all into new life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. My friends, I encourage you to share a sign of the peace within your household or within your pod. Reach out to someone later today. Should give someone a text message or give someone a phone call but know that God's peace goes with you. And don't forget to pet your pets. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, you loved this world so much that you gave your one and only Son that we might be called your children too. Lord, help us to live in the gladness and grace of Easter Sunday every day. Let us have hearts of thankfulness for the gift of your unconditional love. Let us have eyes that look upon your grace and rejoice in our salvation. Help us to walk in that mighty love and grace and tell your good news to the world. All for your glory do we pray, Lord. Amen. Friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.